Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. In this video, we're going to be going through cell fractionation and ultracentrifugation as our second method of how you can study cells and the organelles within them. So grab yourself some paper to make notes and have a go at answering the questions as we go through. So, so far we've already gone through the first video on how to study cells um, and going through the importance of this um, is that's how the structure and organelles of cells was discovered. So the first video was on microscopes, magnification, calibration of the eyepiece graticule. If you haven't had a chance to view that video yet, I've linked it at the top here so you can just click to have a look at that video first and then you can come back to this one. Or alternatively, carry on through this video and I'll link it at the end as well so you can watch it next. So this one is just going to be on cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation. So cell fractionation, this technique is used to um, break open cells so you can then isolate the different organelles and examine their structure and function. So in a previous video, we've gone through the different organelles that you'd expect to find in a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. Again, links at the top and at the end so you can have a look at those videos. The reason it's possible to discover these structures and details and the function is in part due to the microscope studies, but also it's through cell fractionation, which enabled scientists to isolate large numbers of each organelle to then study them. So all of this process involves the cells and then the organelles afterwards being prepared in a solution. And the solution has to be cold, isotonic and buffered. So pause the video at this stage to have a think about why once you break open the cell, does the solution have to be those three things? Okay, so cold, this is because when you break open the cell, you'll be releasing enzymes which aren't typically in contact with the organelles because previously they might be locked up within lysosomes or other parts of the cell. And some of those enzymes could damage the organelles and then that would prevent you from being able to study them. So by producing the cold solution for the study, that will reduce enzyme activity to prevent any enzymes from damaging the organelles. Isotonic, now this term means that the water potential of a solution is the same um, as the cell, but in this case we're not using cells, we've already broken them open, so it's the water potential is the same as the organelles. And the reason for this is that prevents osmosis, so that means you won't have any water leaving causing the organelle to shrivel, and you won't have any excess water entering by osmosis causing the organelles to burst. And if either of those occurred, you wouldn't be able to study the structure and function of the organelle properly. Now I've underlined organelles because this is a common error that students make in exams linked to explaining why it has to be isotonic and cell fractionation. The most common mistake is students say to prevent the cell from shriveling or bursting because that's the terminology they're used to from osmosis but the cell's already been broken open, so it can't shrivel or burst, it's already been broken. It's specifically the organelles preventing them from shriveling or bursting. So lastly, it has to be buffered, and this is to make sure you don't have any sudden changes in pH, um, either too acidic, too alkaline, which again could damage the organelles, preventing them from being able to be studied. So cell fractionation, it's a two-step process. Step number one is homogenization. Step two, ultra centrifugation. Homogenization is how the cells are broken open or homogenized. And this is done using a blender. So the cells that you're going to be examining would be placed into the blender along with the solution, which is isotonic, buffered and cold to prevent damage to the organelles. Now, in this case, I've just got spinach, so you can isolate the organelles from plant tissue. Once you've then blended it, you need to filter your solution to remove the large cell debris. And that will then just leave you with this filtrate, which contains the organelles. So we've now got all the organelles 
removed from the inside of the cell. The next step is step two, ultracentrifugation, and this is how you can then separate the organelles in that filtrate. So the filtrate will get placed in a tube and put into a centrifuge. And this is a machine which spins around at very, very high speeds. And this creates what we call centrifugal um, forces, which causes the more dense organelle to separate and move to the bottom. And in this way, you can then separate out the organelles. It's actually done as differential centrifugation, meaning you do it repeatedly at different speeds and it's increasing speeds. So this first bit here is just talking about what I was saying on the slide before. The centrifuge spins at high speed and those centrifugal forces cause pellets, which is what we call the solid part that moves to the bottom. Um, pellets that contain the most dense organelle to move to the bottom. What you're then able to do is remove the liquid from the top and we call the liquid the supernatant. Remove that into a second tube and then you're just left with the pellets which will contain all of the same organelle which you can then go and examine. So your second tube with that supernatant, you then spin again but at a slightly faster speed and this will then cause the second most dense organelle to move to the bottom and then you repeat the process. Remove the supernatant and you're left with the pellet which contains the next organelle. You do this over and over and over, increasingly faster speeds until you've isolated all the organelles. And just to show you then the order that you'd expect to um, remove and isolate those organelles. The nuclei would be the first to separate because they're the most dense. So they require the slowest speed and they would be in the first pellet. Then go again, increasingly increasing the speed and the next most dense would be the chloroplast and mitochondria. So they'd be in your second pellet. Your third pellet would be your lysosomes and the endoplasmic reticulum. And your final pellet would be the ribosomes. And you are expected to know that order. So you could be asked in an exam question, um, describe how you'd isolate the chloroplasts from the filtrates. And what they'd be after is that you know you increase the speed each time and the chloroplasts are in the second pellet. So in summary, cell fractionation is a way to isolate organelles to enable their structure and function to be studied. It's a two-stage process. So the first step is the cell has to be homogenized, which means to be broken open. And then you have ultra centrifugation. And this is when you spin the filtrate at high speed to separate out the organelles according to their density. All of this process needs to have the um, cells, which are then broken open, so then it's just the organelles, prepared in a cold, isotonic and buffered solution. And this is to make sure that those organelles don't get damaged. Lastly, differential ultracentrifugation is when um, the organelles are separated according to their density. The less dense the organelle, the faster the speed needed to separate the organelle. So that then concludes the two videos on methods to study cells. The first one was on microscopes and this one's gone through the cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation. So for practice questions and to test yourself, just go along to missestrick.com for questions on that. I did say a link to the previous videos, which you can have a look at to help you with this topic. So click any of the links to see the previous videos. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to click the symbol just here to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos.